वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नरम चरसतीम सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय नास्त प्रायेशु अभद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भागवते उत्तम श्लोके मैत्रेय भगवान छात्र
This is the verse of the Dura. So the Dura asked this question. So in the Lord Krishna is supposed to be equal to everyone. Right? Yes. Samoham Sarva Bhuteshu. You know the verse? Samoham Sarva Bhuteshu. Sarva Lokam Vaishwara. No. Samoham Sarva Bhuteshu Name Dvesho Spinatriya. Samoham Sarva Bhuteshu Name Dvesho Spinatriya. Ye Vajanti Tu Maam Bhaktaya Mahite Te Tu Kapriyaha. Krishna says, I envy no one. I am equal to everyone. But here you see, Krishna enters the home of the Pandavas, but he doesn't enter the home of Duryodhana. So, how we can understand this? Well, Krishna goes on and says, I envy no one, I am equal to everyone, but still whoever renders service to me, I am, he is a friend, he is in me, and I am in him. So Krishna has a special feeling for his devotees. He does not have that feeling for the non-devotees. And, and Prabhupada explained, this is natural. Just like a woman has affection for children, but she will have a natural, greater affection for her own child. So in the same way, Lord Krishna is equal to everyone, but he has a special feeling for his devotees. So, he, he doesn't enter the home of Duryodhana, but he enters the home of the Pandavas. And he's like a minister to them. He can guide them, they can ask advice, take advice from him. So, the question is raised, why did the Dura go out from that house? Why did... Why did why Vidura would go and leave the house? Of course, what happened was, there was a, Prabhupada said, misunderstanding, family misunderstanding. Right? Do you have misunderstandings in your family? Yes. Well, all the time, right? <laughs> There's always problems going on in family life. So, uh, uh, there was a problem in the home. Because Vidura was always telling Dhritarashtra, don't listen to Duryodhana. This son of yours is no good. Duryodhana was the oldest son of Dhritarashtra. Right? He was the oldest son of Dhritarashtra. And Duryodhana was always against the Pandavas. There was always competition between the Pandavas and the sons of Dhritarashtra, who are called the Kurus. Actually, the Pandavas are also Kurus, but 
the sons of Dhritarashtra generally they are called the Gurus and the Pandavas. To distinguish between the Pandava, the, the sons of Pandu and the sons of Dhritarashtra. And there were two, there were three brothers. There was Vidur, Pandu and Dhritarashtra. They were all conceived by the seven of Vyasadeva. Vidur was conceived in the womb of a Sudra woman. The first child born was Dhritarashtra. So what happened was before, uh, before that, the king, before Pandu and Dhritarashtra, before they came, there was uh, Vichitravirya. Vichitravirya was married to these two, two ladies. There was Amba and Ambika. And there was a third one, Ambalata. Right? She was supposed to marry some Bhishma. Grandfather Bhishma, he vowed to be Brahmachari. So he arranged for Vichitravirya to get married. So they brought, he went and kidnapped these girls sisters, and he brought them to, to the palace to be wives of Vichitravirya. So, the one, one girl, she was said, I'm, I'm already engaged to be married. So Bhishma said, then you go, you go back. So she went back, and of course the man who was supposed to marry her said, I don't want you. You'd be touched by another man. Because you've been touched by another man, I don't want you. So that woman came back to Bhishma and wanted to marry Bhishma. But Bhishma said, no, I, I'm I vowed to be Brahmachari. I promised my father, Maharaj Santanu, his father. He promised Santanu that I will not marry. So Bhishma told the girl, I can't marry you. But the girl said, no, you have to marry me because the man who was supposed to marry me won't marry me now because you touched me. So you touched me, you didn't marry me. But Vishma said, no, no, I made a vow. So then the girl went to his guru, went to Parasaram, went to Parasaram and told Parasaram the situation. Parasaram said, don't worry. He told the girl, don't worry. He's my disciple. I will tell him. He has to marry you. So Parasaram came and told Bhishma, you should marry this girl. But Bhishma said, no, not going to marry. Then Parasaram got in. He said, all right, they go fight. So it was a big fight. Bhishma and Parasaram. Parasaram was the guru. He's fighting Bhishma. And Parasaram couldn't defeat him. So he couldn't defeat Grandfather Bhishma. So he then came back and told the girl, I couldn't defeat him. Sorry, can't do anything. So that girl, she did a lot of tapasya and she worshipped Lord Shiva and she vowed that in the next life she would be responsible for the death of Bhishma. That she would come. Bhishma actually had a benediction that he could live as long as he liked. He could choose the time when he gave up his body. So that girl who didn't get married to Bhishma, she did great tapasya, worshipped Lord Shiva. Next slide, she came as Sakuni. And as Sakuni, she was, she would come in front of Bhishma. Whenever, when Bhishma was fighting, I showed her that the, the Pandavas asked Bhishma, how can we kill you? And Bhishma said, well, I'm a Kshatriya. He said, I have vowed that I will never fight any woman or somebody who's even been a woman. You know? So this Sakuni, Bhishma knew that he was actually the woman in the previous life who he didn't marry. So the Pandavas would bring Shakuni in front of Bhishma. And when he came in front of Bhishma, then Bhishma would stop fighting. And at that time, Arjuna could fill the body of Bhishma with arrows. So that's how they managed to kill Bhishma. The, 
they took advantage of this this guy Sukuni because he had been a woman. And Bhishma knew that this was a woman in the previous life. So he thought, I can't think. Whenever she, he would come, he would stop fighting. Arjuna would fire all his arrows into the body of Bhishma. And that way Bhishma fell on the battlefield in Kurukshetra. But the other two girls, they were married to Vichitraviri. But Vichitraviri died without issue. There was no child. And the two girls were there. So what to do? So at that time in the Vedic culture, it was allowed that the brother of the, the man could conceive a child in the world. Because they need someone to be the king. You know, the king, the king, Vichitraviriya uh, had died. So they, they, they needed an heir to the throne. So they thought what to do. So then they said, well, uh, this uh, girl, Satyavati, was actually the wife of Santana. And Satyavati said, I have a son. So, the, that was like the brother, because Vichitraviriya was the son of Santano and Satyavati. But Satyavati said, I have another son from before my marriage, and that was Vyasadeva. So they said, Vyasadeva can come. So Vyasadeva came, but Vyasadeva was a great sage. So his body was all hair, and, you know, matted hair, and not very clean because coming from the mountains. And so the girls, the, these girls were queens. They'd been living in royal opulence. And the one girl who was in the, she was put in the room for Vyasa Dev to come and conceive a child, she was so terrified, she closed her eyes. So she closed her eyes at the time of conception. So the result was the child was born blind. Dhritarashtra. So when they saw that the child was blind, they thought, this is not very good. We don't, he cannot be a king if he's blind. He won't be able to be a good king. So they called Vyasa, you have to come again. You have to conceive another child. So they put the other queen. And the other queen was very afraid. She was trembling with fear because the body of the sage was so frightening to her. So the result was that child came out from the womb, came very, very pale, very white color. And so the, they didn't like that either, but at least they could see. So although Dhritarashtra was the first son, he didn't get to be the king. Pandu became the king. And Pandu, of course, was married to Kunti. And Dhritarashtra was married to Gandhari. And Kunti gave birth to her sons, and Gandhari gave birth, actually Kunti gave birth first. Her child, her Maharaj Yudhisthira was born first, before Gandhari could give birth. At that time Gandhari had a child in the womb, and she hadn't delivered the child, so she beat the lump of flesh in her womb. The, and the result was she gave birth to a lump of flesh. And it wasn't even a child, but a great sage, I think maybe it was yeah, when some great sage came there and they divided that lump of flesh into a hundred pieces. And these one hundred pieces each grew into sons of Gandhari. So this way Gandhari and Dhritarashtra, they had a hundred sons. And the oldest of the son, the senior son, was Duryodhan. And Duryodhan was always very much against the Pandavas. There was always a competition. Just like in family life, you know, family life, one son has children and the other son has children, and the son, they, they compete together. Oh, my son did this. Oh, my son did this. Oh, your son did this. Oh, you know, that kind of mood competition and envy and bitter feeling, right? Is it like that at home sometimes? 
Well, it was like that in Hastinapur, between the Kauravas and the Pandavas. When they were growing up, they were, all, they, were, they were trained by Dronacharya to be Kshatriyas, to fight. And you know, Arjuna and Bhima were very powerful, and very strong, difficult to defeat them. So there was always big fights and competition and envy. The Kauravas wanted to kill the Pandavas. So, Vidura would tell Jitarashtra that that son of yours is very bad, he's very demonic, he's a very bad person, don't listen to him. But the father was blind and he, he was naturally attached to his son. You have a son, you have a hundred son, he was attached to his oldest son. And he, he was always listening to Duryodhana. So Vidura was telling Dhritarashtra, you have to do something about your son. So Duryodhana would hear Vidura. So he told Vidura, you get out from the palace. You get out of here. He said, get out of here before I have you whipped to death. You know, Duryodhana was like that. So Vidura understood, oh, I, I have to get out of the palace. Vidura had been living there. Vidura was conceived by Vyasadeva. But what happened, the two queens were so afraid of Vyasadeva, they refused to have another child by him. So they put a, a maid servant in the room with Vyasadeva. And the result was Vyasadeva conceived a very saintly child. And that child was Vidura. And Vidura is Yamaraj. Vidura was young. Yamaraj had been cursed. Mahara, Yamaraj had been cursed that he would take birth in the womb of a Sudra woman. So he came into Hastinapur in the womb of a, a, one of the maid servants in the palace of Hastinapur. And in this way, uh, Vidura was, he was a very saintly person because Yamaraj is one of the Mahajans. Yamaraj is one of the Mahajans. He, he's saintly person. Yamaraj actually got cursed because of Manduka Muni. There was one person called Manduka Muni who, uh, what happened was this Manduka Muni was living in the cave. But when he was living in a cave, one day, a gang of thieves all came hiding from the government officers and they came and hid in the cave where Manduka Muni was living. So these thieves and robbers and plunderers, they were all in the cave where Manduka Muni was living. And then the, 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 the army came to capture this gang of thieves and they captured Manduka Muni as well because he was living in the cave with them. So they thought that he's also one of the robbers. So they took him, they took him also. And they all got taken to court and they all got sentenced to die. They were to be killed. And the way they killed people at that time, the death sentence was done. They had to walk on top. They, had to, they, were, they, were, they would walk on a plank and the plank would be raised above many spikes, which were all vertical spikes, and their body would fall down on the spikes and be pierced by all these spikes. So that was how they killed people, very brutal, very horrible kind, but that was how they used to kill the bad people in those days. So Manduka Muni was also supposed to be killed, and they were just about to kill him when he found out, the king found out that a great sage has been taken by mistake. So the king immediately came there and he stopped them and he fell at the feet of Manduka Muni and he said, I'm very sorry, I don't know how this has happened, please forgive us. So Manduka Muni went away, but Manduka Muni thought, 
how did this happen to me? What did I do to deserve this? So he went to see Yamaraj. He went to Yamaraj's kingdom and he asked Yamaraj, what did I do to, to go through that, ex that experience that they were going to kill me? And Yamaraj told Manduka Muni, he said, that it was like that because when you were a little boy, right, little boys, when you were little boys, you would take grass, you would take a blade of grass and you would pierce the insects. You were piercing the insects, you were sticking that in the insects and collecting insects. So he said, the result was you were going to get that yourself. As you were doing to the insects, you were going to get that. That was you. So Manduka Muni said, that's not fair. I was only a little boy. Little children, they, they don't know when they're doing these things. They don't know what's right and what's wrong. So he said, Yamaraja, I curse you that you can take birth in the womb of a sutra woman. So to Yamaraj, that was a blessing. It was a blessing for him. Because Yamaraj's job is not very nice. Yamaraj is always punishing all the sinful people. He's always sending the sinful people into different hells to suffer. So he, he got cursed to become a Sutra woman, to, to take birth as the son of a Sutra lady. But it was a blessing. Why? Because he got to take part in Krishna, Lord Krishna's pastimes. He got to take birth in Hastinapur and to be with, be there with the Pandavas, to associate with the Pandavas. And he could, but, but then he got cursed. Uh, then, then there was this flip, big conflict between Duryodhana and, and Duryodhana said, get out from here. So Vidura also left the home. So why did he leave the home? Because he knows if I go, I can go to the holy places. I can go and visit the holy places and I can associate with all the sadhus there. And I will get to hear some good katha from them. So, but, so Vidura saw Maya acting. He saw Maya acting on two sides. And one way was Mahamaya, and on the other way it was Yoga Maya. It was Mahamaya because Duryodhana is telling him, get out from the palace. And he was, he was living comfortably in the palace. You know, you're in the palace, you get your meals, everything very nice, but now he's got to get out of the palace. No, where's he going to eat? Where's he going to sleep? Who's going to care of him? So, he was leaving his comfortable city, but it was also yoga maya because he was giving up the bad association. In Hastinapur, he was having to associate with Duryodhana and all the sons of Dhritarashtra. So it was bad association. But now he's going to go to the holy places and he can go to find great saintly persons. And he did. He met with Maitreya Rishi. He met with Maitreya. Maitreya was one of the well, he was a disciple of Srila Vyasadeva. So Maitreya meets with Vidura and they have a lot of talks together. And these talks are discussed, they're stated by Sutta Goswami. Sutta Goswami is using the, the conversations which took place between Maitreya and Vidura to answer the questions of the sages of Nainasharana. Right? We heard yesterday how the sages of Nainasharana had many questions to ask Sutta Goswami. So Sutta Goswami answers the questions of the sages by telling them, oh, previous, 
That question was asked by Vidura. Vidura asked Maitreya about that. And my, Maitreya explained that, that in this way. Everything which was asked by uh, the sages had already been explained by other people before. So the reason why Vidura got out of the palace was to go and find people like Maitreya. And actually Vidura, before he met Maitreya, he met Uddhava. And at first he met Uddhava. Now Uddhava is an even greater devotee than Maitreya. Uddhava is an even greater devotee. Uddhava was a personal associate of Lord Krishna. He was with Krishna all the time. Maitreya, he was a mixed devotee. He was not a pure devotee. He was a Jnana Mishra Bhakta. His devotion was mixed with knowledge. But he got some special mercy. Somehow he was able to meet with Lord Krishna just before Lord Krishna departed from the world. Just before Krishna's departure, Maitreya had come there to that place and he was able to hear from Lord Krishna. Uddhava also came there at that time. So the two of them were then both there and they were hearing from Lord Krishna. Now Maitreya, he he, he, he is a senior in age to Uddhava. So when Vidura came to meet Uddhava, he asked Uddhava, please teach me everything. Because you heard from Lord Krishna, Uddhava got direct instruction from Lord Krishna. So Uddhava told them, he said, no, if I teach you, it will not be proper etiquette. You have to go to, you have to go to Maitreya. He says, Maitreya is senior to me. He said, I don't want to commit offense against him. So he said, you should go to Maitreya. And he said, Maitreya was there at the time. He heard everything I got told by Lord Krishna. At that time, Maitreya was there also. So whatever I tell you, that you can hear the same thing from Maitreya. But if I tell you, he said, Maitreya will think it's an offense on my part. Because he's senior, he's older, he's more renowned. Uddhava was more like a, he was with Lord Krishna living in Dwarka. And Maitreya is Rishi. So in this way, uh, Uddhava refuses to teach Vidura. So Vidura goes to Maitreya and he hears from Maitreya. And we hear in Srimad Bhagavatam, we're going to hear Vidura questioning Maitreya. But for, we will also hear about Uddhava because Vidura meets with Uddhava and they discuss some things. But then Uddhava said, you, have, you should go to Maitreya. It's more brief. Vidura and Uddhava is brief. But then he meets Maitreya and then many things explained, many things discussed. So that's why Vidura left. That's why he got out of the house. To get the good association. And Prabhupada said sometimes these family misunderstandings are arranged just so a devotee can make spiritual advancement. Just like Trivi Prabhu. Right? Trivi Prabhu was in family life. But there was misunderstanding so he comes, came to Krishna, came fully to Krishna consciousness. He was already devotee, but the wife was not devotee. 
She was a Buddhist. But he was already the Buddhist. He was initiated by Mahal Krishna Maharaj. And so Krishna arranged, Krishna took him out of that situation so that he could fully devote himself to Krishna consciousness. And Krishna arranges these things. Just like Prabhupada, Prabhupada saw in his home also misunderstanding. Misunderstanding, Prabhupada's business was not good and there was no money, there was no money, all the family were complaining and even one day Prabhupada's books went missing and Prabhupada thought maybe my, his wife had sold the books so that she could buy some biscuits or something. So anyway, Prabhupada saw no point to stay here in the home any longer. Because he retired, he didn't really close the business, he was retired. So, Prabhupada took the opportunity to leave home. He asked his wife, do you want tea or do you want me? She said, why well, brother, have tea? Prabhupada <laughs> <laughs> said, okay, I'm going. So he left. And he went to Vrindavan. And he never went home again. Even when he was leaving to go to America, he didn't. He came to Calcutta, but he didn't go home. His son came to me, but he didn't go home. Okay, any question? Yeah, sometimes that's which your life. Suffer. So by Krishna's mercy, they take away a of time. So uh, apparently you look at not very auspicious. You left everything, you left the wife, you know, you cut some jealousy. So sometimes Krishna forced us to leave the Yeah. Krishna said, but I am very merciful to some I take away their attachments. So in that helpless condition that they surrender to me. But then the relative and the common people you see, we we chuck away the family. Then it goes to the church. Yeah, people may say, oh, yeah, yeah because they had not, no money, <laughs> nowhere to go, they came to Krishna. So they may say like that. Yeah, they say like that. But, but we point, I pointed out yesterday when I was talking about four reasons why people come to Krishna consciousness. See, unless people come to the position of knowledge, then they'll go back again to material life. Or they may come in distress, or when the distress is over, they go out again. They come in search of wealth, when they get the chance to get some wealth, they go, they go away. Or when they're curious, when all the questions are satisfied, they don't come anymore. But if they actually understand, if they hear, if they understand the philosophy, they'll never give up Krishna consciousness. So they have to come to the platform of knowledge. Then they can be steady in devotional service. And yeah, other people, they're saying, oh, you just became a devotee because you just joined this because you have nothing else, you have nowhere to go. No, that's not true. There's so many other places we could go. Could go to Christian, could go to Islam, could go to Ramakrishna Mission, could go to Sai Baba. <laughs> Why we came to Hare Krishna? Huh? So, it's 
not just only that oh I have nothing. There's so many other places you can go. But somehow we came to Krishna. Why you came to Krishna? Because the philosophy, because the knowledge is so real and so deep and meaningful that you can never give it up. But other things, oh you may get material facility, you may get a nice home, you may get a job, you may get an, a nice wife, you may get some money like that, you get these things. But yeah, just like it's common in different countries, they use different things to attract people into their faith. Just like in India, in India it's common, the Christians will try to induce people to take up Christianity. They will offer them, you know, a job, or you can, you can get treatment in our hospital, and your children can come to our school, and different things like that. And he, here in Malaysia, people are more inclined, of course, the majority of people are Islamic. So you want, you want to maybe take to Islam, you have a lot more rights, a lot more benefits. If, you're a, if you believe in Islam, you can get a job easier. So many things, incentives are there. Why, why would we come to Krishna Consciousness? You don't get anything here, really. What do you get? <laughs> you don't get anything really. You get the holy name, you get some prasada. The knowledge is a moment. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I don't think it's a one God. It's one God, right? Same God. It's not that Muslim God is different from Hindu God. It's all, there's only one God. They have different names, different methods of worship, but there's only one God. So it's a question of how they worship. Just like, you know, there are people who are Islamic or vegetarian. Not everyone is a meat eater. There are people who believe in Islam who don't take intoxication, they don't smoke, they don't drink. They follow some similar principles to what we follow. So that's important. They should keep the religious principles. You can be a Christian if you want. But you have to follow the principles. No meat, fish and egg, no intoxication, no gambling, no illicit sex. Those things are there for everyone. Doesn't matter what your faith is. Even the, in Hinduism, even they have the thing, you know, if you're, 
what happened was uh, there was this one devotee, Subhuti Rai. Subhuti Rai, in the times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there was this one boy, one man, Subhuti Rai. So Subhuti Rai, he was a, quite a wealthy man, and the land property, big property in the room. So he had one servant. So one time the servant did something wrong. So Subhuti Rai came him. And the king left a mark on the body of the boy. So later on that boy grew up and he became a very prominent Mohammedan ruler. Although he previously been a servant, he became one of the rulers. And he had the mark on his body and one day his wife saw the mark on his body and she asked him, what's that mark? And he said, well, when I was a young boy, I did something wrong, and that man, Supuri Rai, he came me. That's a mark. So she said, the wife said to him, you should get revenge on him. You should take revenge on him. And, he, and to the, the man said, well, no, I, I did something wrong. I deserved it. And she said, no, you have to do something. To, you, you should take some action against him to get revenge. So he said, okay, what I can do is that uh, I can make him a Mohammedan or turn him into a Mohammedan. And in those days, you could turn someone into a Mohammedan just by pouring water on them. If a Muslim just poured water on some Hindu, then that Hindu would become a Muslim. Have to become a Muslim. So he went there and he poured some water on the Buddha and he said, now you're a Muslim. So Subhuti Rai didn't know what to do. So he went to some brahmanas and he asked them, is there anything I can do to atone for this? And they said, the only thing you can do is you have to drink boiling ghee. So to drink boiling ghee means death. You die. If you drink boiling ghee, you die. So he, he didn't know what to do. He didn't want to do that. But then he met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him, he said, you don't have to drink boiling ghee. He said, just chant Hare Krishna Mantra and serve the Vaishnavas. So he did that. He chanted Hare Krishna Mantra and he would serve the Vaishnavas. And he was living in Vrindavan and he would go in the forest, he would collect wood, bring it to the market and sell it in the market and with the money, he would buy rice and yogurt and he would cook it and serve the Bengali devotees when they came. Because the Bengali devotees, whenever they would come to Vrindavan, they would get sick. Because in Vrindavan, everything, everybody's eating braj roti. Braj roti is a, you know, wheat and it's very hard to digest and very easy to get sick if you eat a little bit more. Than so uh, the Bengali people, they're used to eating rice and yogurt and like, so Subhuti Rai would prepare rice and yogurt and when they came, he would feed them rice and yogurt. And then this way, he got the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he got freed from his curse by chanting the holy name and by serving the Vaishnavas. Very powerful. Okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Shri Mataka Bhattam. Jai.